Hi guys. Welcome to our channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to repair your iPhone charger like a pro. The charger does not work and when shaken it makes a sound. You don't need to buy a new one, just follow the step-by-step -step video and get your charger working again without waiting. It can be a little difficult to open the box of the charging adapter. I'm spraying freezer spray on the charger's marked spots. I cut the areas where I sprayed the freezing spray slowly with a utility knife. Be very careful not to get injured while cutting. This is the part that makes a noise when you shake the charger. I check for any visible damage on the circuit board of the charger. I solder 220 volt plug wires to measure voltage on the circuit board. Take your safety precautions when measuring voltage. Note that there is 220 volts on the circuit board. I measure the output voltage as the first measurement and I can't see the output voltage of 5 volts on my multimeter's display. I'm measuring the voltage of a 220 volt DC voltage input capacitor. I see 310 volts. This voltage value shows me that the voltage is regular until the SEMPS control IC. Input fuse and bridge diode are OK. I use a microscope to make a detailed examination on the circuit board. Solder cracks appear on the components and transformer pins on the circuit board. One of the main causes of solder cracks is thermal stress. During operation, electronic devices generate heat which can cause expansion and contraction of materials, including the circuit board and components soldered to it. You can buy the microscope I use on Amazon. You can find the sales link in the explain section. You can also watch the microscope review video on my channel. I'm checking the capacitors on the circuit board. I facilitate the desoldering process by applying flux on the circuit board. I re-solder the capacitors so that I can easily remove them from the circuit board. Using a solder sucker pump, I'm removing the capacitors from the circuit board. I also use the capacitance measurement feature of the multimeter to measure the capacitors. The capacitor value is 13 point for microfarads. The capacitor is OK. Capacitor value is 4.6 microfarads. The capacitor is OK.
The capacitor value is 324 microfarads. The capacitor is OK. I'm removing the switched mode transformer on the circuit board. SEMPS transformers operate at high frequencies and are designed to work with other components in the switching circuit, such as power transistors and diodes. High frequency operation makes SEMPS transformers smaller and lighter than conventional linear transformers used in linear power supplies. I am checking the winding ends of the transformer with a multimeter. If there was a problem with the winding ends, an open circuit would appear on the multimeter display. I did not see any problems at the winding ends of the transformer either. You can buy this multimeter on www.kaiwits.com. You can check other multimeter types at www.kaiwits.com. Now I'm renewing the solder on the circuit board. I will apply liquid flux on the circuit board and ray solder with a hot air gun. I clean the flux residues on the circuit board with isopropyl alcohol. Other electronic components on the circuit board. ABS 10SM coated bridge diode and 4.7 ohm fuse resistor. ECOM 16 SM coated SEMPS control integrated circuit. IP2186 charge control integrated circuit. TEL for 31 voltage reference integrated circuit. A 90 sm coated MOSFET. I have checked all the electronic components on the circuit board. I couldn't find any faulty components. But in the voltage measurements I made, I saw that the SEMPS control integrated circuit did not drive the transformer. I didn't press the camera's record button when I made these measurements, so I can't show you these measurements. I re-soldered the circuit board as there is a possibility that the fault may be caused by the cold solders on the board. Now I'm going to replace the parts I removed and check it's working. Unfortunately it didn't work, charger does not output voltage. Defective material SEMPS control integrated circuit, unfortunately, I couldn't find this material anywhere. The charger cannot be repaired because the component cannot be found. Thank you for watching my iPhone charger repair video, I hope you found this video useful. For more technical information and DIY repair videos, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.